The latest police statistics have revealed a significant rise in crime throughout Quahog. I drive a 2006 Infinity and I don't intend to lose it. Well, I hate to admit it, Lois, but over the last couple of years, this town has changed a lot. And not necessarily for the better. Well, I disagree with you guys. I think Quahog is still pretty great. You know, it's hard for me to take the things you say seriously when I know what's been in that mouth of yours. Give me all your money. Okay, okay. You have a white wallet? Yeah, just like Truman Capote. Who's Truman Capote? Give a warm Quahog ocean land welcome to Bojangles! All the fish in the bucket, now! <gasps> We've been burglarized! Well, we'll just have to get that $17 insurance check and start over. Oh no, they took my gym shoes. Sorry, glutes. No blasting today. They took my dirty rope that was tied in a knot. Maybe you guys were right. Maybe our town has changed. It's sad to think that Quahog isn't safe for families anymore. Hi, I'm Peter Griffin. Um, I'm looking for a wholesome place for my family to live, so I'd like to buy your farm. Hey, Lois, you know how I'm always buying things impulsively? Well, that's going to be very hard to do now that we're living on a farm. What? I can't believe this. And it's not like it's the first time you made a big family decision without consulting me. Peter, where'd you even get the money to make that kind of purchase? I sold the house, and I did it on Craigslist, so I also made a dangerous friend. Lois, you were saying yourself how you want our kids to grow up in a wholesome place away from the big city. I, I did say that. Don't you see, you guys? I did this for the family. Just think of this farm as our next great adventure. Like when we tried to invade the city of Troy. Come on, guys, what do you say? Will you join me in eating eggs fresh out of a chicken's butt? We've decided to take you to a nice big farm upstate. Here we are, everyone. The Griffin Family Farm. Oh, look at us, Brian. Frontier people. Peter, what are you doing? Well, Lois, a big part of owning a farm is crossing a road very slowly with cows. Hurry it up! Wait a second. Now oh, get in line, you! Chris, you gotta spread that seed until your sack is empty. And Meg, you gotta clear away all that brush so he can plant it deep where it needs to be. Peter, there's a guy standing out in the yard. Oh yeah, that's Larry. Part of being a farmer is having a best friend named Larry who I spend huge amounts of time with but never actually talk to. Peter, I'm dying. This is the last time I'll ever see you. Bye. We haven't grown a single crop to sell. And meanwhile, you're spending half our money down at the general store and the other half at the specific store. And is it true that you've been spending the farm's money on gingham shirts you tie into a knot to expose your belly? I bought a couple. Look, it's like I've been saying, farming is very difficult. When? W when, when did you say that? Farming takes incredible skill and knowledge. My point is that maybe I should go to the local state college and take some agriculture courses. With the proper training, maybe I can actually learn something that'll save this farm. Okay, that's all my stuff. I'm off to State Tech Ag Central College Tech. There's really two techs in there? Oh, he packed a guitar? What a douche. Guys, what's that over there? Well, hang on, guys. It might just be the Tasmanian devil. Come on, into the storm cellar. What is that? Ah, oh, sweet. It's some kind of lab. You guys, I think this is a meth lab. Oh my god. Oh my god! You guys, there's a fully functional meth lab in our basement. Boy, we should clean this place up. It's a meth. Don't you see? This lab is just what we need to get back on our feet. No way, Peter. Dealing drugs is morally wrong, not to mention incredibly dangerous. Look, it'd just be temporary, Lois. Just for a bit. Just till we get the farm back on its feet. Till we get our family back on its feet. I don't know. All right, Peter, we can make one meth, and that's it. And it's only because I don't see any other way out of this. Thanks, Lois. Now that I'm a meth dealer, I'm going to respond violently to outside noises that the rest of you don't hear. Uh, okay, Peter, but I... What was that? Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's probably just dead. Did you guys lock the truck? Dad, we don't even have it. What the hell is going on out there? <laughs> Gee, I hope I didn't scare the cows. I don't want to put them in a bad mood. I've trained this carrier pigeon to do all my deliveries for me. Ah, oh, perfect, perfect. And this is the money I owe Peter. I want you to take it back to him. Yes, hello. I'd like to buy 400 blister packs of Actifed or similar pseudoephedrine-based decongestant. Why? I have a cold. Okay, you're fine. Be right back. Well done, Stewie. That could have gone really wrong. Hey, everyone, I'm back. What the hell? <laughs> I brought some heirloom tomato seeds. That's nice, Brian. Here's a new kind of meth you put in your pee hole. Wh what? 
Well, this is just great. I turned my back for a month and this place turns into a drug den. For your information, it is also a drag queen hangout. Methamphetamine is flooding into Quahog in epidemic amounts and is believed to be originating from the nearby rural community of Farmton. We're hurting our own hometown. All those drugs that are flooding into Quahog are from us. Meth has turned us into monsters. Lois, take it easy. No, I forgot you don't even know your ass from a hole in the ground. First of all, you sat in something green and it's on your butt, so no one's going to follow you. And second, no one's going to leave a place where there are tons of beakers for a place where there are zero beakers. Look at our family. I don't recognize us anymore. It's time to go back to Spooner Street and be the Griffins again. Lab inside the house, which is currently producing an incredibly volatile and explosive batch of thermoreactive chemicals. Well, it's good to be back in our old house. How do we get this place back, by the way? Well, luckily the value of this place plummeted because this is a meth town now. Hey, are you guys in there? Peter, I need a taste. I've got Maureen McCormick with me. She'll let you finish anywhere. Okay, everyone hide upstairs. Daddy's gonna take care of this. Evil Knievel gloves. I bet I could do a wheelie with these. How much for the gloves? Peter, those are yours. Peter, you can't drive a car over that. You're gonna get hurt. I'm here to revoke your driver's license. What? Why? We got reckless driving, disturbing the peace. Hey, Give me the officer. damn license. Well, don't you want it? This is yeah. in poor taste, yeah, Peter. You're starting there? to yeah. piss me well, off. You You're is, starting hey? to piss right. me off! Right. How's life in the fast lane, Mr. Peterson? Griffin. I can't find the on-ramp, Woody. Quit stealing my punchlines, you fat drunk. I'll just make my own sitcom in my head. And I'll give it an upbeat 80s sitcom theme. Loving my wife, but then I got that letter. My black son, my black son, my black son. He's making each day the best that he can. This is an entire bottle of NyQuil. I know, and it's doing wonders. Come here, puss. We don't have a cat. That's a throw pillow. Uh... <laughs> hey, this one's cute, huh? And if we buy it, they save a real gorilla in the wild. And if we don't, they kill one. Wow, these guys are playing hardball. Rupert wasn't kidnapped. I accidentally sold him at the yard sale. <gasps> you son of a bitch! <laughs> Get out of the fridge, Peter. There is no Peter, only Zool. I said get out of the fridge. All right, all right. My own driver? That's awesome. Where is he? She's right here, Peter. Meg? Yeah, Dad. <laughs> Dad, are you ready? Now to check that DNA against the federal database. Oh, we have a match. Stanford Cordray, 89 Spooner Street. He moved. He's gone. Rupert's gone. Wait a minute, look. The moving truck. Didn't you hear me? I said, follow that truck. Oh, I heard you. What I didn't hear was, please. Please, please follow the, the truck. truck. I'm sorry, but I can go no further. If I enter Connecticut, I'm entering every state that Connecticut's ever been with. Now we've got that fellow's address. Let's see. Aspen, Colorado. Well, you can forget that. We're not going all the way to Aspen. What? Don't you think at some point you're going to have to let Rupert go? I mean, you are getting a little old to have a teddy bear. Brian, I'm one. Still? What? Now, are you coming or not? Ah, <sighs> fine. Ah, oh, this sucks. Can you believe I'm stuck with Meg driving me around? Dad, it's just you and me in the car. Yeah, don't remind me. You want to watch SpongeBob? Yes. Hey, hey, Cleveland, who would you rather do? Queen Latifah or Halle Berry, but she's been dead for six hours. Oh, man. Shut up back there! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> ah, gross! Will you stop it? Stop it! Hey, Meg, I lit your scalp on fire. <laughs> Don't worry, I'll put it out. <laughs> if we want to get to Aspen, we're going to have to get over those mountains somehow. It says here you accept cash, check, or a jaunty tune. Well, this rental agreement was drafted back when musicals were culturally relevant. But you might just learn to like it if you give it a try. You could laugh and sing and dance as... Okay, you can have the helicopter. It's Aspen. We made it. Oh, you should have seen what our amazing freaking daughter did to that guy, Lois. She kicked his ass. 
It was like what life did to Dana Plato. Accidentally sold you a teddy bear back in Rhode Island, and I kind of need it back. I'm sorry, but that bear belongs to Timmy. Now please leave. If I win, I get Rupert. Interesting. What do I get if I win? My dog. You know, Dad, it's been really great hanging out with you. I know there's probably a million things you'd rather be doing. Are you kidding, Meg? Look, I I know sometimes I give you a hard time. You know, calling your names, reading your diary, farting in your cereal when you go to get milk. Peter, good news. Your suspension is up. You can have your license back. You you mean it? I'm free? You and me are secret best friends. Who wants a glass of fresh lemonade? Oh no! If only I had rockets in my skis! Oh wait, I totally have rockets in my skis! Tea, sir. You're not really gonna live with them, are you? No. You're not really over Rupert, are you? No. That's what I thought. Did we just carjack someone? We sure did, Brian. Lois, I need $28,000. For what? I've decided I want to open a sushi restaurant. What do you know about sushi? Peter, you're not getting money for that or anything else. We're running seriously low on cash right now. In fact, I may have to get my own full-time job. Hey, isn't it time for me to get a haircut? Oh, no. I think you just got one. Are you sure? Because I feel like my nails are really long. Our top story tonight, the Rhode Island State Lottery has climbed to a record $150 million jackpot. The answer right there. We'll just win the lottery. In fact, I'm going to go buy my winning ticket right now. There's teenagers in skinny jeans out there. Where did you get the money for all these? Simple. I took out a second mortgage on a house. What? Peter, this is idiotic. Your odds of winning are like 100 million to one. Peter, Brian's right. How can you be so irresponsible? You take these tickets back right now. No way, Lois. We're going to win. They're going to announce the winning lottery numbers. Time for the Griffin family to meet its destiny. When we lose, I'm getting a divorce. Understood. This! 31. Spooky ghost mouth! That's a zero. Snowman! Eight. 24! No, that's it. We're done. Anyone watching, do not count 24. Okay, I don't know what she's doing now. Somebody turn the machine off. All right, how do you want to do this? A static shot of the house where night turns into day, or a montage song that over-explains what we're doing? This is taking forever. That's why Brian is yawning, and Stewie's rubbing his eyes. Three days wasted looking through 200,000 lottery tickets. Those weren't the lottery tickets. That was a test. These are the lottery tickets. So in addition to buying 200,000 lottery tickets, you had 400,000 fake ones printed up? Oh my God, we won! This is awesome. Now that we're rich, our lives are gonna be so much better. You sure it was such a good idea to cash that lottery check? Uh, Hello? Did you blow all your money yet? No, Daddy. All right, call me when you blow all your money. Love you, bye. All right, so how are we gonna spend our winnings? We're not gonna go crazy spending our winnings and we're not gonna let this money change us. What are you talking about? This money is our ticket to the good life, starting now. I quit my job, Lois. You what? Yeah, we're rich now. I don't need to be working. Oh, you should have been there, Lois. I told Angela what she could do with that job. Hey, Horace, another round for everybody. Yeah! Gosh, Peter, you're really being generous with your money. Well, my friend Marty's come up with a new penis enlargement pill, and if we can bankroll him $100,000 in startup money, he'll triple our investment in a year. Bonnie's birthday is coming up, and I'll be gall darned if I didn't go ahead and promise her that Stevie Nicks would come to our house and sing three songs to her. Yeah, so what do you say, Peter? Can you help us out? Of course I can, you dope. We're pals, right? I gotta head out. I told my mother I'd visit her in the hospital. Yeah, and I gotta work. I'm flying a leg to Minneapolis tonight. Oh, and I I thought friends hang out, do things with each other. You know, especially when one friend gives the other friends a whole bunch of money. Guess I could stick around. From now on, we're all gonna do whatever I wanna do. Cause I'm the one with the dough. Okay, I guess that's fair. Hey, Peter, you wanted me to watch the entire first season of True Blood and come show you where there was boob? That's right. I don't want to see any actual True Blood. Just boob. Okay, Quagmire, I want you to take the first bite out of this fudge pop. Because that first bite is the one that really hurts. Mm. Ah. Now smear what's left of it on your face and look at me with your mouth open. Look at yourself, you filthy whore. Bacon whoopee while I shoot you with this BB gun. That doesn't sound safe. Action! Action! 
Look, you aren't gonna shoot us in the eye, are you, Peter? Hey, Joe, open your eye. Ah! Gotcha. What the hell, Peter? You shot him in the eye! Screw this! You're a jerk! I don't care. I don't need you. I got money. You know, Peter, you used to be a great guy. But ever since you won that lottery... Ah! Ah! Peter, what the hell are you wearing? It's a solid gold tuxedo, Lois. You know, I spoke to Bonnie this morning, and she said you haven't talked to Joe or Quagmire in two weeks. Who cares? I don't need Quagmire. And I certainly don't need Joe. I had a giant mobile put in the sky so I can sleep wherever I want. <sighs> this is nice. Model glue, sir. Well, what do we have today? Today, we have a recent vintage procured just this morning from Michael's Hobby Shop. <gasps> oh, my God. Peter, it's beautiful. Now that I'm a rich father, you will try to impress me and I will remain distant. Meg, as a girl, your life holds no merit. And Chris, try as you may, you will never be as good as your older brother who died. He was good at sports and talking. Uh, I never thought I'd be having high tea at the Park Barrington every single day. This is Peter Griffin. There seems to be some issue with our credit. I told Carstairs you'd set everything straight. What do you mean I'm broke? What do we do now? Well, seems like our only hope is the lottery. Holy <laughs> we won twice and we're right back here again. Peter, we can't live like this. Well, what are we supposed to do, Lois? Everything we had is gone. We have friends, Peter. Not anymore, we don't. Well, well, look who it is. Who is it? It's me, Peter. I'm standing right here. This is a glass eye, Peter. I thought being rich would solve all my problems, but all it did was make me forget what was important. Like who my real friends are. That corner's a bit of a hike for me. I'd rather just come see you at home. Where'd you get this kind of money? The penis enlargement pill you gave me the startup money for. Thank you. You're welcome. Boy, I gotta say, it's good to be home. Yeah, despite all the ups and downs, things turned out for the best.